The ACLU obtained a document from the Justice Department that shows uh, the basic retention periods of major cell phone providers, okay? So basically, uh, there are certain types of private information that cell phone providers keep, and they keep it for a s specific period of time. And it differs from one provider to another, okay? But I wanted to give you some of the uh, information that I found most interesting. So they actually collect your location data, all right? And of course, they collect all of this stuff for their personal use, but also just in case law enforcement want to obtain it through legal procedures. Yeah, of course. Right, yeah. okay. We, we all know that legal procedures don't play a role in all cases. <laughs> okay. yeah. they, by the way, just so you're clear, we're not just saying that. There's uh, these things called national security letters, where the FBI decides that they want to write a letter to themselves, yes. and then they present it to somebody and go, okay, give me all their personal information. Right. So uh, they do collect your location data. When Verizon does this, they keep it for up to one year. When at and does it, they keep it for three years. Now, another thing that they keep are uh, your text messages. And uh, some cell phone providers keep the actual content of your text messages. Others do not keep the content, uh, but they keep track of who you are communicating with via text. So uh, at and actually keeps that information for seven years, where Verizon, or I'm sorry, Virgin Mobile will keep it for only two to three months. Hmm. Yeah, you get an argument for Virgin Mobile. Virgin Mobile, interestingly enough, and T-Mobile are uh, the two that don't keep the information for too long. See, that's why we had T-Mobile as a sponsor. Slash totally random. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, this is disastrous. <laughs> I mean, look, at, look, look we, we've lost the Fourth Amendment. It just doesn't exist anymore. And it's amazing because there was never any really fight over it. Like... And, and the funny thing is, I was just with some Tea Party folks, and they gave, they gave this whole huge spiel about the Constitution and how much uh, people in the Tea Party care about the Constitution. I'm like, how about the Fourth Amendment? Although, to be fair, the Tea Party uh, does fight against the Patriot Act, so they are consistent on that. But the great majority of the country, it's like, okay, now they can just get our records without any probable cause, without getting a warrant. You know, who cares what the Constitution says? It's just gone. It's gone. It I is. mean, look, to, on a day like this where we executed two American citizens without any due process, we shouldn't be surprised, right? But we've lost such a huge chunk of the Constitution, and nobody even noticed. And what's really scary is this information is being collected and it's being used by authorities in the name of national security, right? And any time a governmental official tells you that they're trying to keep you safe, get ready because they're about to take some of your constitutional rights away. And a lot of people buy into that, right? Because they buy into the fear mongering that they see in the mainstream media and they think, well, they want to keep us safe. What's wrong with it? I'm not hiding anything. So sure. But so, you know, Glenn Greenwald wrote a great article about this in Salon Today where he said the great genius of the American political bureaucracy these days is that they have people cheer as you take their rights away. So if Lockheed gets killed today, he's a U.S. citizen, no trial, no due process, not even an indictment, we execute him, right, mm -hmm. uh, by dropping uh, a bomb on his head. And the American people cheer, like, yes, now American citizens can be killed abroad without any trials, yes, right? And so they cheer over this because they're gonna keep you safe. But look, we've covered a million of these stories, I'll just give you one great example. They're not doing it to keep you safe. Uh, when they found out why, what people were actually spying in on. One of the things, for example, was we spied in on our own troops in Iraq. And what would they do? Did they listen for connections to Al-Qaeda? Of no. course not. You know what they listened to in the phone conversations? For phone sex. And all the guys would gather around who was doing the secret snooping, and when the guys got on, either with their wives or their mistresses, and including some of the top leaders in, in, the, in the military, okay, everybody would listen in and snicker, haha, <laughs> as they did phone sex. That's what they're snooping in on. You know why? Because they're human beings. And if you let human beings have all this power without any checks, that's what, they, that's what they do. That's why the Founding Fathers wrote the Constitution. It was supposed to provide that check. Unfortunately, now apparently no one cares anymore.